Okay, I have had the Wii Boost for a while now, and somebody asked for my review on it. So here we go, short, sweet, to the point. And I'm at a Lowe's travel stop in the middle of California, and no idea where, honestly. It's a travel stop with like the really big open field next to it, but oh, beautiful views, look at that, gorgeous. Okay, so, Wii Boost, OTR, Fleet. I have changed trucks, one, Two, I've had it for so August, so a little over six months now. I have drove, I drove, I've driven. I have driven from Houston all the way to Reno, to Portland, San Francisco, San Diego, and back, utilizing it the whole time. And here's my honest review. One, it's awesome. I don't care what anybody says, it has really saved my several times. The newer F-150s usually come with AT&T Connect. That's the Wi-Fi via AT&T signal. And the Wii Boost actually boosts it. I was able to host Zoom calls for interviews on the side of the highway in the middle of Oregon. I'll show you where I have my, there's my interior booster right there. I actually ran it around the, the cab and back down. The newer truck still has it in the exact same place as my old truck. The only difference is these newer trucks have a porthole right underneath the passenger seat excuse the mess i've been traveling but right underneath the passenger seat underneath your uh, your power inverter there is a rubber little insert just pop it out and wire straight up through it once again i'm going to remind everybody who has the wii boost they do not put i don't know why this isn't in the paperwork for the inst installation instructions but every time you call them they immediately know your interior antenna and your oh i'm sorry your exterior antenna and your interior antenna need to be a minimum of eight feet apart or you get cell signal uh, interference between the antennas. I don't know why that isn't in the installation instructions. It needs to be. And also, nobody ever talks about their customer service, which is awesome. The end of my cable had ripped out when I was swapping trucks and they don't recommend doing it yourself or ordering the piece and like actually fixing the cable so they just sent me a whole new antenna and we went back and forth on emails because now we boost has the overland series which covers a some which covers a lot of the issues that i had with the original otr fleet the new overland antenna has actual disconnect about a foot and a half down so you're actually able to take it off and put a larger uh mast on it i did upgrade from the regular mount on the side that comes with the antenna itself to the rhino rack. I've been doing a lot of like parking in tight spaces, especially now living in San Francisco. This comes in handy. It's a hundred dollars, but totally worth it. My overall opinion, as a reminder, these cell signal boosters are called boosters for a reason. They do not create a signal. They only boost a signal if it's available. The only times I have actually lost signal, have it's actually been the last couple of days. I was in the San Gabriel Mountains, like actually up in the mountains and there's absolutely no service there. I probably had service a little further than most people did, but other than that, I've had no issues. I've never lost service. It's worked very well. Now, the way I have mine rigged, I'm able to quickly reach back there and turn it off and turn it back on. Just like with any cell service, you know, as you're, as you're driving, you know, your signal swapping towers. Same thing with the booster. You know, it, it may not swap correctly between towers or like the interference with the signal. So every now and then I'll restart my phone or rest, uh, put it on airplane mode, turn it off or turn put it on airplane mode and then put it back on. And then same with the, the boosters, I'll reach back there, I'll turn it off, turn it back on, fires right up, no problems. The main issue with people with these and then like them complaining about it not working is because of the, the the mounting situation when they try to mount the outside antenna like right here or like right here which isn't enough distance in between the two between the exterior and the interior and they have a lot of issues with interference one other product i will talk about briefly because i'm losing daylight here i'll go in more detail about it later bulletproof mounting solutions they make the dash mounts best thing i've ever bought like that right there saved my butt so many times i've got my gopro mounted 
We got it hardwired to a power source from the inside. I don't have it plugged up right now because something's going on with my SD card and storage and memory. And then magnetic phone holder here. And I've got my, except my booster right there. It's gotta be within 18 to 36 inches of the antenna for it to actually boost correctly. I got my laptop I'll have sitting right inside here. You know, the Wi-Fi receiver is also up in here. Up in here, up in here. <laughs> now the Wi-Fi signal is on a 3G network, which honestly is fine because everybody's on the 5G trying to like get the signal. My internet speed is sometimes faster than my cell phone speed because nobody's on 3G and I'm boosting the signal. So, oh yeah, y'all like, like my new trick? Oh, the lights went off. Okay. But yeah, overall opinion with the Wii Boost from the middle of the mountains to the desert, to anywhere along a major highway that I've been driving, and most of the time off the highway too, up until I get to, you know, like higher mountains, and there's just no signal there with anybody. Wii Boost work great. I highly recommend it, as long as you mount it correctly. Yeah, and that's it. That's all I'm going to say, because there's really nothing else to say about that. Later.